theirs. This house is theirs. I didn't realize it was her. The first time I realized anything was the first day. This picture was by her bed. I took one look at it and I knew what had happened. That's when I called you to warn you not to work for Dr. Kavanaugh, a man who would know Draper Scott only too well. I'm sorry. It must have been a terrible secret to have to keep. It's a secret we, we, we just can't keep anymore, Miss Emily. His family and his friends, they, they're all around you. All they have to do is just see him. <laughs> just once. But Molly, what am I supposed to do? I'm just supposed to give him up? Just say, well... You're not married to me at all. You're married to another woman. Is there any other way? Molly, he has been Kirk to me all along since he came to us that night. He has been my husband to me. Now, how am I supposed to stop loving him? You only loved him because you thought he was Kirk. Emily, Kirk is dead. Hi. I found it. The old walking stick. I was a little worried. I thought I'd for, forgotten how to use it, but it's not true. It's like the bicycle. Once you learn how to ride it, you always know. Yeah, well, you should have gotten out of bed. No, I was getting restless. A little lonely for you. Oh. All you had to do was call me. I would have come to you. Let's sit down. How does that leg feel? Oh, it's down to a, a dull thud. It feels much better than when that crate first fell on it. <laughs> Poor thing, having the same leg hurt twice. Oh, don't worry. Sometimes things like that happen. Was it really that man's fault? The one who brought you home? It was an accident, Emily. Hey, Jock took good care of me. Should have seen him. When he carried me up to the infirmary, he wouldn't let the doctor look at me until we talked about his credentials. He wanted to make sure he graduated from medical school. It seemed like he was very nice. Yeah. And he gave us those passes, don't forget. That's right. Amusement park. Mm hmm. The rides are all free. It sounds like fun. Yeah, but you're going to have to do an awful lot of walking in an amusement park. Don't worry park. about my leg. My leg's going to be fine. 100% mobile by tomorrow, I promise. Well, if you really want to go. Yeah. You know, maybe we need that. I mean, maybe it's, it's about time we went out and had some real fun. Yeah. It is about time. You know something else, Emily, you know? We never dated. Maybe that's what we need to, to help us. You're right. I think it's a wonderful idea. Just the two of us. Two of us together. What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing? Now, why are you crying? Because because I'm happy. You know, Emily, the, the way you're carrying on, you'd think I'd ask you to go on an around-the-world cruise with me instead of just a day's outing to an amusement park. Kirk, it doesn't matter to me where we go. Just as long as we're together. As long as we're always together. Can't understand it. Never will understand this, this tears of joy business. Why anybody wants to cry when they're happy is beyond me. I think I know why. Yeah. What's your theory? Well, a person can feel more than one emotion at once. I mean, he can feel happy and at the same time feel afraid. Yeah, but why? Because he's afraid that maybe that happiness will be taken from him.
Is that your fear? No. Not since this afternoon. Not since you told me that, that you're beginning to love me. Kirk, that made all the difference in the world. Maybe that is what you're afraid of, Emily. That the, the last ten years, you know, ten years of my past, are all going to come back one day and just slap us both right in the face. No. I don't want to think about the past. I won't think about it anymore. Honey, what is important is right now, you and me together right now. Mrs. Scott, I, I'm so sorry I'm late. I'll just start dinner right away. Molly, are you all right? Yes. Jo I'm just a little rushed. <laughs> so that's all it is? You seem upset? Oh, how going to and from Oakdale on those freeways of yours is enough to make anybody gray before their time. <laughs> I'm just going to have a cup of tea and then I'll be all right. Where's Emily? I thought she was coming with you. Oh, oh I forgot to tell you. She isn't coming after all, Mrs. Scott. She asked me to tell you. Oh? When I got there, she had a headache, and she didn't feel like making the trip. Well, maybe I should call her and see if she's okay. She was on her way upstairs to bed as I was leaving. I'm sure she'd appreciate it if you didn't disturb her. Yeah, well, did she happen to mention to you at all why she wanted to come and talk to me? Not a word. Oh, except she asked me to tell you that... Uh, Whatever it was is settled, and she won't bother you about it anymore. It's kind of strange. She made it sound to me like it was a matter of life or death. Oh, oh well, that's Emily. She exaggerates everything from time to time. <laughs> I'll get that. Mm. Yes, Oscar. Uh, just a minute. It, Mrs. Swift is downstairs. Oh, tell her I'm not home. Oscar, would you tell her Mrs. Scott isn't home? Oh, you told her she was. Yes, send her up, Oscar. Thank you. Could I get you some coffee or anything? No. No, thank you. Uh, there will be no overt signs of hospitality. Hello. How are you? Just fine, thank you. And what can I do for you, Raven? Well, I am here looking for a missing person. Mm. Well, if you came here to play hide-and-seek, you're in the wrong place. There's no one or nothing under either the sofa or out on the terrace or anywhere else. I see. Well, I'm looking for my husband, and this does seem to be his favorite haunt these days. Sorry, but you're a little late. Logan left town this afternoon. On business? On pleasure. Vacation. I find that very hard to believe. My workaholic husband doesn't know the meaning of the word vacation. Well, maybe he just looked it up in the dictionary and decided that he needed to take one. He's been under a little bit of stress lately. Well, he didn't say anything to me about it, and an impulsive vacation is certainly not part of his character. Believe it or not, Raven, some people are actually capable of change. Well, I'm sorry, but I find it hard to believe. It doesn't make any sense. He has to prepare for this custody trial, and that's only four weeks away. Well, maybe he feels he has enough ev evidence that it's all taken care of, and the only thing that's left is the shouting match. But his strategy isn't even set yet, especially considering his latest change of tactics. What are you talking about? You mean you don't know? <laughs> April, Logan has changed his mind, and he is not going to call you as a witness. From the slightly astonished look on your face, I assume that you didn't know. Well, this happens to be the first time I've heard it. Well, Logan has changed his plans, and he's decided not to call you as a witness. Are you sure you have your facts straight? Mm-hmm. He told me himself. Well, now, why the sudden change? I don't know. You know how gallant Logan is. He probably decided it would be a lot more fair to you if he didn't call you on a stand and put you through all that third degree. Raven, Logan and I have already discussed that. Well, maybe he was just being practical. Maybe he was afraid you would crumble under cross-examination and then your testimony, as well as his case, would go down the drain. Raven, I really do hate to disappoint you, but I won't crumble. Besides, now why should I believe you? Why should I lie to you? 
Oh, I don't know, Raven. But finding rational motivation for any of your behavior is is never easy. April, I am telling you the truth. Well, maybe you are. Just maybe you are. But I think I will wait and hear it from Logan himself. Well, you go right ahead. But you're not going to learn anything new. And when he does tell you the news, I hope you won't try to talk him out of it. You are so afraid of what will happen if I testify, aren't you? No, I'm not. It's just that Logan is the lawyer. And if he thinks this is the right way to handle the case, I'm sure you wouldn't want to try to change his opinion. I'm going to have another drink. Listen, the Grand Falls PD may not be as up-to-date as you hotshots in Monticello, but we're well-trained. Yeah, you probably think we're nothing but a bunch of keystone cops. But nobody is questioning your competency or the competency of your officers. We just want to get an answer to a very perplexing question. And I'll tell you again. None of my men were responsible for the mix-up of those bodies. I'll stake my badge Look, on we're it. not talking about that. All we know is that the body of Sam Dwyer wound up handcuffed to some insurance salesman. Now, we would like to know how that happened and what happened to Draper Scott. Look, as soon as word spread that the express was halfway in the river, mm -hmm. half the county turned out to lend a hand. People were crawling in and out of that train, helping to get the injured out. And I was a little too busy to get down all their names. Look, isn't it possible that one of the volunteers could have removed those handcuffs and then maybe thought better of it later and put them back? Why not? There was a lot of confusion. Could have hooked them up to the wrong bodies. Mm, that's as good a theory as any. Although I can't imagine how you're going to find out who did it. It's very important to us that we do find out. You don't have any idea how important it is. Look, I don't know what's going on down there in Monticello. Or why this even uh, has to be made such a big thing out of after all this time. A man, presumably dead, is not in his grave. We'd like to know where he is. <laughs> I suppose you are catching a lot of flack over this mix-up, huh? <laughs> but if the Monticello cops are looking for a scapegoat to take the heat off, you aren't going to find any sacrificial lambs in the Grand Falls Will you stop being so defensive Look, about not... this and just listen to we are what not, we have to say? We are not looking for a scapegoat. We're looking for our friend. Now listen, I was working with the rescue team over on the riverbank. I must have seen three, four bodies tossed out of that train, only to be swept away by the river current. Mr. Scott received a burial at sea. There is no doubt in my mind about that. Isn't it possible that somebody could have escaped on the other side of the car? The oh. car that was still on solid ground, then they wouldn't have gotten swept away by the river. Then they would have been picked up by the rescue workers. All right, let's speculate for a minute, okay? Now, now let's just assume that this person did get past the rescue workers, and he happened to wander off somewhere. I'm just speculating now. In your opinion, where do you think he would go? All right, now, this is the site of the train wreck. Mm -hmm. Now, a man trying to avoid capture wouldn't head back in the direction of the crash. And he wouldn't head to the east. Why not? Heavy brush country. A man lost in that area most likely would starve to death. Well, Draper didn't know that. He didn't know the country. He could be in there even now. Well, we thought some survivors might have headed in that direction. So he went through the area with a fine-tooth comb. If he was hiding out there, we would have found him. Or his body. What about north? <laughs> That's the direction of the Redstone Prison. Even Mr. Scott knew that. I'm sure he wouldn't be fool enough to walk into his own jail cell. Well, that leaves west. What's in that direction? Yeah, that's the way he probably would go, all right. A town called Evansville is just down the road. A man on the run could find food, shelter, before moving on. Evansville, here we come. Sheriff, thank you for your time. I hope we haven't caused you too much inconvenience. Yeah. If we find out anything, we'll let you know. I think it's good, Nancy. Very okay. good. Uh, okay. If anybody wants me, I'll uh, I'll be up in my room, okay? You have any plans for this evening, Kelly? No, nothing special. But it's your night off from the unicorn. Well, I thought I'd just hang around here. Maybe design another puppet. Well, I've had this cowboy in mind that I've been wanting to put together for the longest time. Uh, 
Kelly, I realize that Monticello isn't the entertainment capital of the world, but I'm sure you don't have to look very hard to find something interesting to do in the evening. No, I'm fine, really. Kelly, I imagine that uh, when you were living abroad, it was kind of difficult to adapt to uh, other languages and customs constantly, but uh, you wouldn't have that kind of trouble here in Monticello. I think you ought to go out more. Well, I, I will, Mike, soon. I think you spend much too much time alone. You're a very personable young man. You ought to get out and circulate. I, I'm sure you wouldn't have any trouble making new friends. Well, actually, I, I have met a really nice girl. Oh. Well, she's pretty and really smart. Obviously, Kelly doesn't need our advice. No. <laughs> Her name is Jody. Uh, she works down at the Unicorn as a waitress. Oh. But she doesn't seem that interested in me. All I am to Jody is the guy that runs the light and sound system. Oh, Kelly, give her time. I'm sure she'll come around. And if she doesn't, there'll be others. Well, I asked her if she wanted to come with me tonight, you know, to go down to catch that new Western film at the Midway. She turned me down. Well, that doesn't mean that she won't say yes next time. Is she uh, involved with someone else? Well, not someone as much as something. Well, she had a dance class tonight. Jody always seems to have a dance class. Oh, is she serious about that? Oh, yeah. Well, Jody wants to be a professional dancer more than anything else in the world. Well, she spends every spare minute taking classes and rehearsing and exercising. I've never seen anyone more dedicated in my life. Oh, I have. You. Me? Sure. Puppeteering is a very large slice of your life, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. You were just about to spend your whole evening up there working with them. Yep. <laughs> I guess you're right. So maybe uh, you and Jody, uh, what's your name, have more in common than you think. Oh, her last name is Travis. Jody Travis. Really? Oh, that's interesting. That's Nicole's maiden name. Mm hmm. Huh. Hey, uh, didn't Bobby Burroughs uh, tell us to tune in his program about this time? Oh, yes. Well, yeah, you're right. Oh, hey, do you think he's really going to say something about my puppets? Well, you implied as much. Uh, Nancy, what were the uh, call letters of the station? Uh, 1100. Okay. Here. Now, there's one of the big tunes for you from the summer of 80. Hey, before I get right back at you with a set of golden goodies... <laughs> the Bobby Burroughs Entertainment Tip of the Week is on the air. Now gather around your radios and listen to old Bob, because this week's tip is a sure thing. It's about a young man named Kelly McGrath. Who just happens to be the most talented young puppeteer to come along in a very long time. Now I first heard about Kelly when he was donating his time and talents to the children's ward at Monticello General Hospital. Where he delights the patients and makes them so happy that they get well a whole lot quicker. But the good news is that you don't have to check into the hospital to check out Kelly's act. He works at the Unicorn Disco over on Coriander and has been known to put on an impromptu show from time to time with his Poco puppets, much to the delight of the young customers. Now, if you think that all discos are the same, you are wrong, W-R-O-N-G. So get on down to the Unicorn Disco and check out Kelly and his little friends. He may be the best thing about the place. And now, back to more music. That was quite a plug. What did you think of your rave review, Kelly? Oh, Mr. Dorn didn't hear that. So, you and Logan have been getting awfully chummy. Raven, I've already told you I don't consider that a topic for discussion between us. Yes, I know. You're best friends. April, I think I better set you straight. Logan is a man, right? And all men are alike. What are you getting at? Let me put it this way. I suspect in the past week that Logan's attitude toward you has changed. Has he cooled off considerably? I hadn't noticed. Well, it's true. I know it is. And I can tell you exactly why. Raven, I really think it's time for you to leave. I hope you don't think that his affections, that he's lavished upon you, have been genuine. Because I'm afraid, honey, they've only been a ploy to take advantage I of the widow's scotch. I don't think you heard me, Raven. I said good night.
Your testimony was the only thing he was concerned about. And he lavished affections on you because he needed you. I'm sorry, but that was his intent. So that you would be there when he called. that bad. I can turn down my own bed. I'm not leaving, Kirk. It's time. It's time for us to start sharing one bed. Like any other husband and wife. Without sight, the edge of night. 